reminder, you may have network and you may network and collaborate through the chat function located in the bottom right corner of your meeting window. Second, we will hold all questions for the presenters until the end of the session. The Q and a function will become available at about 15 minutes left. At which time you may submit questions using the Q and a function. Please include the name of your presenter to whom you, your question is directed. Click the button with the three dots in the lower right hand corner of your meeting window. Third, to receive continuing education credit, watch for an email you'll receive within a week following the activity. It will contain a link and the instructions to complete the conference evaluation and download your certificate. A final reminder, this session is being recorded. We're going to wait just a little, little bit, just a few minutes to allow some more participants to join, but we will begin this session very soon. Thank you. Chad, you're muted. Thank you. How about that? We'll start off again. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody to uh, the CPS class on car seats, panel number two. This is worth one CEU. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that I'll be reading your chat box messages, and I will forward those questions both there and ones that you put in the formal chat the question and answer box that will come up about 15 minutes prior to the end. I'll pose those questions to the uh, each of the panelists and try to get to as many as I possibly can. So last class, we were overwhelmed with several. I do want to start out by giving a background about myself they asked about. So I am, my name is Chad Edwards. I'm one of seven traffic safety liaisons for the Illinois Department of Transportation. Uh, I actually work for the Illinois Chiefs of Police, retired from the state police after 27 years, and I'm a lead uh, instructor holding many or most of the classes in the central part of the state. So I'd like to introduce first each of the panelists. I'm going to introduce all three panelists. Uh, Danny might help me with his pronunciation of his last name, but um, we're going to go through each three, each of the three, and then we're going to start off with the first panelist. So Bob Wall represents NUNA. He is a nationally recognized public safety professional and has been a leader in the CPS field for over 30 years. Bob, along with a dedicated group of CPS advocates came together over 25 years ago to develop and co-author the national standardized CPS curriculum that is still being used today. 
to certify CPS technicians all across the world. Uh, Bob joined new, the NUNA team in 2012, prior to our first entry into the US with the PIPA infant car seat and base with a load leg. It was one of the first of its kind in the United States. He serves as a resource and an educator on yeah. car seat safety for the NUNA team and others yeah. across the country. So we welcome Bob, yeah. Nuna, Bob Wall from NUNA. And next, we also welcome Daniel Schlaefer from WizRider. Um, WizRider was created by two jet-setting Swiss dads. I love the way that that sounds, Danny. Uh, frustrated by the lack of safe and convenient ways to get from their urban families from point A to point B, they found car share car seats to be unreliable and pricey. And when traveling farther afield, discovered that lugging a car seat was far less than ideal for daily excursions. Inspired by both their professional and personal lifestyles, they, the founding dad duo developed the inventive restraint system solution, which quickly and easily clips onto any car, any seatbelt. Uh, Danny Schlaefer is a certified CPS technician and an avid rock climber which helped spark the idea that a harness could be just as safe and secure as a car seat. So we wanna make sure that we, th we thank Danny for being here today, especially on behalf of WizRider. And then finally, our last panelist is Tony Jerushi from Kids Embrace. Tony, and I recognize Tony all the time because I always see his charming smile and his mustache, which <laughs> tells me that Tony's in the room. Tony's retired as a captain with the Joliet, Illinois Police Department in 2009. Listen to this, after 39 years of service is how long he was there. Tony became a CPS instructor in June of 2000. While on the Joliet Police Department, Tony supervised their CPS program, certifying over 100 sworn police officers and non-sworn Joliet Police Department personnel as CPS technicians. Tony has served as a CPS advocate for the first years by Learning Curve Brands and as a C CPS advocate for Kitty USA. From May 2012 until December 2016, Tony served as a CPS advocate specialist, product trainer, and as a lead CPS instructor for Caro Child Safety. Since January 2017, Tony has been an advocate relations manager and lead CPS instructor for Kids Embrace. Tony is also a consultant with Smart Rider Incorporated. So I'd like to thank all three of these instructors and car seat specialists to talk about their car seats today. And each will have about 15 minutes. And we're gonna start off with Bob Wall. So Bob, the stage is yours. Well, let's make sure that we have everything up there. Can everybody see what, somebody give me an indication if we can see it. Bob, it looks perfect. All right. Trooper, I don't know anybody who would use Tony's name and the word charming in the same sentence, but God <laughs> love you for it. Um, He's got a great mustache. Uh, okay. Um, so do a thousand firemen around the country, but that's all right. That's another story. Okay. So, <laughs> um, as you said, I work for Nuna. I've been with Nuna for about, at this point, nine or 10 years. And Nuna, when they came to the United States, they came as a relative newcomer to the U.S., but they were not a newcomer uh, to the world. They, they've been around the world for many years. And since they've been in the U.S., they've become a, a lot bigger, obviously. So last year, the uh, Nuna product brand partnered with the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITARD, to actually work on a program to help child pastor safety across the world. Um, so there will be some training and unfortunately everything, just like everything else in life has been sidelined by COVID. Um, this kind of got sidelined as well, but you should be seeing some UNITAR um, programs going across the world here soon, hopefully, when, when COVID ever decides to disappear, um, we'll be doing a little bit more, um, not only in the US, but also worldwide. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about today is um, our new offerings for 2020-21, 
And I'm going to talk about our newest thing. And we have, you know, the very first thing that we came out with in the United States was a PIPA, the PIPA infancy. And um, it is one of the, the mainstays of what we have to offer in the United States. It's also one of the most popular car seats in the United States currently. Um, it has a anchor point, rigid anchor point on a base and a stability leg. Well, this past year we took and redesigned the, the base and now we have a second base called the Relax Base. So our new product is called the Relax Base. Um, we're gonna go over the differences in those bases, but with that relaxed base, we also introduced two new infant seats that come with that relaxed base, which we're gonna go over um, as we go through this presentation. So the relaxed base is simply just our PIPA base redesigned or rethought. And you'll see the picture here, and we're gonna go over the little features here. But when you look at this picture, it's quite different looking than the base that we um, started out with. Um, it's, it's got a lot of different features here. You also notice, and a lot of people see this picture and say, well, it's got a, a huge overhang in that center seat. We're gonna talk about that too. So when you look at the new base, some of the things that are different or some of the things that are definitely added, um, the steel reinforced true lock anchors on the bottom are the same except for they're more adjustable they have four positions that go in and out toward the seat that it's installed in it also has an on-the-go recline so in the past our standard base in order to recline it you would have to uninstall it and you would then use the angle foot this does not have that this is bubble free it has four dedicated rear facing. Just like our other one, it has a steel reinforced stability leg. But the difference is the stability leg is a little bit longer and a little bit shorter. So it's more adjustable. It also has a locking feature on both going down and going up, which our other one was free flowing going down and locked coming up. So again, it's a little bit different. Um, and the biggest difference in this base and the other base is adjustability. So when you look at this, it has a low profile for this base. So you, the, the person doesn't have to lift the child up quite as much to get it in the base. So it's a little bit different, but our biggest, the biggest thing you're gonna notice is our seat lock off, our belt lock off, and our anti-rebound panel. Really, it acts as an anti-rebound panel, but it actually is our lock off. The design of the lock off is a two-piece lock off where it treats the belt just like it would on an adult. The lap belt goes across the lap portion, and then the shoulder belt comes up at an angle, which makes it very intuitive. Underneath that panel, it has the labels that say lap belt here, shoulder belt here. All you really need to do is buckle it in and the shoulder belt really does exactly what it's supposed to do automatically, just like an adult. You would put it in place and lock it down and it's there. The adjustability part comes when the four position really rigid anchor. Once it installed, then you can push from the front and it gets tighter into the back of the seat. So that panel there, which is our lock off, acts as a re anti-rebound panel. So when you look at it, it's basically installed the same way. And you'll see here in this picture, she's using just the bottom parts to install it. And the reason why we're gonna talk about nuances here is you wanna install the anchors first and then push the seat back into the vehicle seat. So you wanna push the base in. It has four positions. In this one, she's got it installed. It's already touching the back of the seat. So she's not gonna really have to push it in very much. So when you look at this, you also notice, and people will say, well, that hangs off a lot. 
the general rule of thumb, and this is obviously nationwide, is 80-20. 80% on the seat, 20% hangover. With the stability leg, it is allowed to be 60-40. 60, 60 on the seat, 40 hangover. Um, this is only with the leg in use, and this is only with our seat with a leg. Um, we can't answer for any of the other manufacturers that have um, stability legs out there, which a lot of agencies now do. So when you look at this anti-rebound or this piece here that add, it's added to the back, which is the lock off, really what it does is you push it into the back of the seat and it helps the ease of installation and helps achieve a tighter install, or at least the feel of a tighter install. When you think about it, it's rigid anchored into a rigid bar. It's not much, you can't get much tighter, but if you fill in that gap and push it in, it does have a, a more secure feel, both front to back and side to side. Because as you know, sometimes they do slide on those bars a little bit side to side. Again, it's less than an inch, but this will, alleviate that completely. This also has an on the go. Now we say on the go doesn't mean do it while you're driving. Um, it is a four position recline for this seat. One and two are from four pounds to 20 and three and four are 21 pounds to 32. Now those are guides. Okay, you can put it in any of the four we are facing. It doesn't matter age. Age is just giving people an idea of the best pat practice for the seat. There is no angle indicator. There. This has been tested with the average angle of a seat bite plus our seat, which has additional recline in it that you can't see. So we don't have to line up a bubble or line up the green in between this or whatever. So. The leg, instead of being two position, it's a three position leg. And what that does is it allows better installation in a wider range of vehicles. So if I wanna do the center rear, and we've all heard this, center's better, center's better. And I continue to say, if it fits, if it fits, if it fits. Um, if you're you know, hell bent on doing a center seating position and you have a leg, sometimes that leg will not work. So, because of the hump in the middle, this leg is designed shorter and also it's a two inches longer for those big pickup trucks that have the low wheel um, foot wells in them. So, it'll get longer and touch the floor and it also gets shorter. So, it goes into a lot of those seats that are vehicle seating positions that have large humps. Now, this base before it was even put out. It has been tested in over 300 cars at this point. Um, and at, there is no car that I can find at any auto show or any place else that has a hump too big for that lower position of the leg. That doesn't mean they're not out there. I just haven't seen them in the 300 cars or so that we've done. Um, again, one of the things that was Achilles heel with um, this PIPA seat in the past is the rigid anchor, and I'm going to say it this way, the older base or the standard base with the rigid anchor will not install correctly in a BMW 3 Series. It will install in a BMW 3 Series with a seat belt, but the lower anchors, because of the installation window and the geometry of the seat in the back, will not allow it to be used with the lower anchors because we can't get it at the right angle, we can't reach them. This base, however, the very first seat that I touched was a BMW 3 Series, and it works fine. All right, so the belt lock-off. So I talked to you about the belt lock-off. you notice that in this picture, it has the lap belt portion, and then the shoulder belt portion comes across just like it would come across an adult. The little ear there, or the piece there that holds that lap belt down is only there for seats like this, where the belt path comes from high into the back of the seats. You'll notice that the anchor point is very high in that seat, which causes that belt to come up. Well, we want that belt to stay down and hold that seat in. But if you have a normal one, like 
coming out of the where the buckle is, that little ear or that wing right there will never even come into play. Hey, Bob, I hate to interrupt you, but we are going to need to switch to our next panelist. Oh, no problem. I'll let you go. You. I'm sorry. It's all right. Thank you much. Not a problem, Lee. Thank you. Let me get rid of that. Oh, you got rid of it. Danny, you're now the presenter. Thank you. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Perfect. Thank you. I try to stay on time. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> I can make it short. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for the great opportunity presenting from for for all of you. Um, I'm Danny. As uh, uh, here we are. As uh, Chad explained. Absolutely perfectly. I'm one of the two active Swiss stats. I'm the one on the right side and the, the rock climber. Um, um, the background is clear. We invented Swiss Rider back in 2016 based on our experience. As Chad explained to you, we didn't find any um, kind of car seat or child restraint which uh, meet, meet our expectation, like being small, safe, as possible as possible. Um, it needs to be easy to use. Misuse was a, was a topic. And of course, it needed to be lightweight. That's why we created and invented Wist Rider. What's Wist Rider for? Wist Rider for actually for all the situation I'm quite sure you're familiar with. You don't have a car seat at hand. We all know it's best to secure our children, but sometimes it just happens. That's life. Life takes over. Um, that can be situation as possible uh, carpooling, spontaneous travel, city living, pickups, ride sharing, and hopefully we can travel um, more in the near future, cross fingers, but there are many other situations. But please let me say it loud and clear. Wist Rider is not thought as a replacement for a car seat. Whenever you have your own car, use your proper high back car seat, or of course, young children, the rear facing car seat. We believe at least you have to secure your children, regardless what car seat you use, just secure your kids while driving. Um, before I go into details and try to explain you how Wist Rider works, um, I would like to show you a short video so you see how it works. So you see, it really takes literally less than a minute. Fair enough. It needs some practice. Some people are more handy than others. Um, the kids around uh, my house and my daughter, she, she they, they do it by themselves. That works pretty fine. A couple of seconds, and we're all set to go. I'm pretty sure you miss a lot of compens, like a proper seat. It doesn't boost your kid. Um, again, we speak uh, about mobility, spontaneous travel, and those situations not having a car seat. And of course, still we have the same issues like every other car restraint have to solve. We speak about energy management, dynamic forces. Um, it's still the same. Actually, we think there are three major challenges we have to address. One is the submarining, of course, the lag injuries and injuries in the inner abdomen, and of course, always the shoulder bat, uh, uh, the shoulder belt, uh, which can slip down the shoulder. How are we addressing and solving this? Of course, we have no plastic, no hard covers. 
Again, it's less than a pound, it's small, it has to be portable. So we use our red steel leg, uh, red clips and the leg loops mainly to avoid or prevent submarining and the harsh forward sliding um, through our uh, leg loops. That concept, we can kind of bind the child down to the seat. So there is no forward movement anymore. We can reduce the risk of injury to inner abdominal organs. And of course, head snap forward movement will be reduced as much as possible. Remind you, most accidents happens in slow traffic around the neighborhood, short drive. So it's uh, basically made for those situations. Again, the, the shoulder clip, very important. With our shoulder clip, the shoulder belt stays on the shoulder. And the feature I like are the red trims. They are high reflective. So thinking of winter time, I'm pretty sure <laughs> you as well know all those situations. It's dark outside, it's snowing, it's raining, it's cold. It's good to, to know that your kids will be visible while getting out of the car. Of course, we use high quality materials, components and webbings, mainly coming from the climbing area and parachuting. Of course, safety is top priority. Like every other series car seat manufacturer, we did all the testing uh, along the uh, FMVSS 213 standard. We did numerous crash tests with three, six, and 10 years dummies we did um, with lap belt only and the top tether. Yes, we have a top tether solution, obviously, and of course with lap and shoulder belt. Unspoken, all the, uh, the results are brilliant. We just have brilliant results. Of course, flammability is a big issue, but we can say Wisrad is free to lead and other toxical chemicals, which is important while thinking of our um, children, skins, and no chemicals. A summary to say it's size of a medium cup of coffee. It's less than a pound. It's easy to install. Again, honestly, you need some practice, but I'm pretty sure two or three times you, you know how to, to install it. It keeps your kids safe while hopping in and out of course through the reflective materials. And of course, the seat belt is always where it should be on the child, snuck and keep it safe. And it's always where you go. We have two sizes, a small and a large. They are overlapping. As Bob explained, it's um, not about the, the, the age, but age is a, a nice indicator. It's age or weight, which is important. Uh, according to the testing standards, we started with three years up to 10 years. Um, of course, keep your kids as long as possible in a rear facing car seat. I think that's just common sense. That is the thing to do, but still you're good to use a wrist rider after the age of three years, up to 10 years. Recently, we got a lot of feedbacks from parents um, well, traveling with autistic kids saying, hey, we love the large. Actually, we would like to have a X large because it keeps our kids safe uh, seated on the back seat while we had problems with other car seat. Nice feedback. We're going to get deeper in that area, but still we have a small and a large, and we can solve or serve most of the kids' sizes. This rider costs around $90. We always have discounts on Amazon, Bye Bye Baby, and other channels. If you, as CPST or instructor, need a wrist rider, please reach out to me. We always have CPST discounts we can offer. Yeah, we take responsibility. It's not only about uh, safety and doing testings. We believe in quality, not only because we are Swiss and produce with a German company. We believe it's important to serve and uh, deliver best quality we can. Um, no toxical and chemical things I explained already. And of course, we try to manufacture as human as possible. We have a lot of nice and 
awesome and overwhelming feedbacks. So far, we have almost three, 6,000 families using Waste Riders, and we can say they're all happy and they use Waste Rider not only on a daily basis, but mainly if they travel and if they meet other people. These are my coordinates. Reach out to me if you need any further information. Happy to share even crash those results. Just shoot me an email and I'm looking forward to getting in contact with you. Thank you. I'm fine. All right, are you ready, Tony? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. I can't see anything, Tony. Hold on. Okay. Let me get the PowerPoint up. And while we're do while you're doing that, Tony, I'll let everybody know I will type Danny's email up on the screen here in just a second as soon as we introduce Tony and get Tony going. Uh let's see. Okay, can you see my thing now? Is it, am I sharing the screen? I have nothing on your, on my screen from you, Tony. Oh boy, hang on just a second. I, we'll get there. Uh, let me try. Danny, yeah. are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Uh, while Tony's working on that, just a question that came up. We'll, we'll yep. throw it at you right now. Uh, Danny, is it approved for aircraft use? No, it isn't because of the lack of uh, of the top resolution for airplanes. We can't. Okay, Tony, we've got your screen up, but we need your from the beginning. It's a coming. Here okay. we go. Are we good now? Yes, we got you, Tony. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Hey, glad to be talking back to the state of Illinois again. Thanks. Bob and thanks Danny. Danny's my good friend in Switzerland. Thanks for joining us, Danny. Okay, Kids Embrace. Kids Embrace has been around since around 2012. We're a fairly new company and we are, Shad, could you move your screen or whatever there? Let me see if I can move it. It was, it's in my way. Yep, got it away. Okay, we make safety fun, but safety is always our first priority. I love to show this as if you guys have ever heard me talk, you'll see that I will show this slide often when I'm giving my presentation, because to me, this is what this is all about. That child was sitting in the back of that seat. That boy walked away from this crash with only a small bruise on the boy's cheek. And it doesn't matter what car seat was in that car, Batman, whatever company it is, as long as the technicians are out there helping parents educate them so that these seats are put in properly and that these children are put in properly in seats, then these kids can walk away from the crashes like you're seeing right there. And all you technicians out there, you are heroes for doing this because we do save lives when we make sure that the parents are educated and the seats are in properly to give the kids the best chance to survive the crash. This is our family of car seats right here. You're gonna see superheroes, you're gonna see princesses, you're gonna see Chase, the, the police dog, Marshall, the fire dog, Sky, the helicopter pilot, but front and center, there's Batman. Let's take another look. Let's take a closer look at our combination seat and Batman. There's a few things I wanna point out on this slide because when we're at conferences, I can say, Come to the booth, I'm gonna show you some things. I can't say that now because I can't let you touch and feel these seats. So I'm gonna have, I've got a few more slides that are uh, in this presentation to point out things a little bit closer. But on this slide right here, I wanna point out that the, that this seat is approved for forward facing children between 22 and 65 pounds and 29 to 48 inches in height. And I always say this, of course, if you have a 22 pound child and you have rear facing available, Rear facing is the safest mode of travel. Let's use that to the highest mode rear facing. But if you do not have an option, this is an option for you. You may start a child at 22 to 65 pounds in this particular seat. It does convert to a booster seat as a combination seat. And it says right there 30 to 100 pounds, but we do have a change. And this is one of the updates. As you can see on note right there, and I'll get into this 
a little bit more as this presentation goes on. As of July 2020, for the, uh, the booster seat is now going to be rated and it will be labeled for kids four years of age and between 40 to 100 pounds. That's one of the updates and one of the changes in our seats. I personally love that change. Before I leave this slide, I want to point out the cape on Batman. Whoa, it's got a that cape can be velcroed off if you want to. And I'm sure that this cape was not put on here for this particular reason. But when I've been at conferences, I have had uh, special needs people come up to me and tell me, do you realize that that cape can come in handy for certain special needs situations? And I'm like, no, I really didn't know that. I was told that like in autistic kids or things of that nature, that this cape can be kind of wrapped around them to make them feel more secure and they will sit in that seat a lot better than they would otherwise. So this is just something I'm pointing out to you guys that I was told by special needs people out there in the field. I'll talk a little bit faster because I'm not sure exactly how much time we have here. So let's move on. Here's one of the things that uh, I can't turn the seat around to show you. I got to show you on the slide. Energy absorbing pads. They're constructed of EPP foam and they're designed to help take the load off the harness in a crash. And no, as some people have asked me, they are not packing material and they do not get thrown away when you remove the harness to uh, convert to a booster seat. Uh, if in fact you ever lose this piece, uh, I know you can contact our company and we will send you a new piece, but no, these are part of the belt system and they are not designed to be discarded. Here's another thing that uh, I want to point out to you. And as you can see, I have a page of our instruction manual on there. And remember when we were teaching in class, or when we teach in class, the old adage was, uh, if you don't know the answer, say, look in the manual and you'll probably be right. Well, here's a situation here in that first sentence. It says, crotch strap must be in opening closest to, but not under the child. It doesn't say should be, it doesn't say we recommend, it says must be. So this is one of the thing I want, this is one of the things I wanted to point out to you that when you're securing that child in the seat, make sure that that two position crotch buckle is in the proper position when securing the child in the seat. And please encourage all the parents out there to read manuals on any product that they're using out there as far as car seats go. The foot recline, another thing I would say, come to the booth, see me, I'll show you this. I can't show you this, but you're gonna look at it in the picture. Over on the right, I have another picture from the manual and you'll see in number one, where it says to recline the seat, that foot is in the position as it comes out of the box. You have to manually reach, pull that foot down, clamp it in to adjust it to the slight angle it will give you on the forward facing seat. Again, please read the manual to know how to adjust this. It is permissible to use this foot in any position, reclined or not reclined. And it can be used in both the harness seat mode and the booster seat mode. Now, something that comes up in reference to the foot is sometimes there'll be a slight gap created between the back of the car seat and between the, ve and between the vehicle seat and the back of the car seat. People ask me, is that okay? And the answer to that is, as long as you can get a proper fit on your car seat, no, no more than one inch of uh, movement back and forth or side to side, then your installation is fine. You have no problem. Don't worry about it. Another thing people came up to me at the booth and would advise me of special needs people, they tell me that this recline foot can be used in certain special needs situations where if you are working with a child who has a breathing problem, this slight angle will help them in that particular situation. These are just things I want to mention to you that have been said to me to keep in mind when you're educating the parents out there working out in the field. Here's another thing you can't see by looking at a picture and that's the highest harness slot on the seat. As you can see on the picture of Batman to your left, there are three arrows, one and two. The bottom two arrows are pretty easy to see, but the top arrow, you can't really see it until you move that headrest at least one or two notches up. And then you will see the highest harness slot. It's not real much higher than the middle slot, but it does give you a little bit more room. I want everybody to know it's there. 
I want everybody to know that it's usable. It's been crash tested. It looks a little different than your lower slats, but it is perfectly fine to use. And it may give you that little extra room that you need that you're more comfortable when securing the child in this car seat. But you do definitely need to lift the headrest to get a good look at it. And on the back of the seat, when you look at that, uh, at the harness slot, it is not to be used for tether storage. And we're going to get into that a little bit more in the next slide. Because boom, here comes the orange latch system. When this came out, I loved it. It was something that our team had worked on for quite a while. Every time I go to a conference and I ask people in the audience, do you like it? I get a good round of applause. I like the fact that this is jumping out at you and that you can see it. And people might say, hmm, what is this? Maybe we should take a look. We did this at Kids Embrace to increase the awareness and help promote and help promote tether use, but we used it on the lower anchors and on the tether also. You'll see a little in parentheses there. It says 45 pounds maximum weight. That has that's an indication of to the upper weight that you can use our latch system with uh, a child. 45 pounds maximum weight. Now this is another one of our big changes here. If you look at that bottom picture, you're going to see the push on connectors for lower anchors like the IMI, we have changed. We now have a hook style lower anchor system as you can see in the top picture. And now the, the, the storage that used to be for the tether is now the new storage for our hook style anchors as you can see. Now since, the, the, now since that storage is not available for the tether, we recommend that you rubber band the tether on the back of the seat when not in use. I personally like the system better. Uh, I like the storage better. Uh, I just like the system better. It's easier for me to use and I like using it. But that is another one of our big changes on our seats that you will see uh, since about the middle of last year. High back booster seats. Uh, our high back booster, here's where we're gonna talk about that change too. Uh, as you're gonna see about a dash down there, you're gonna see as of July 20th for children, a minimum of four years old and between 40 and 100 pounds. That is in reference to when it is in the high back booster mode because the high back booster mode used to say a minimum of three years old weighing 30 to 100 pounds. You will find the new uh, weight limits on the new seats to come out. Is it retroactive? No, I would recommend that you, you, you know, that you say it, it's, uh, that you use it to 40 pounds, but you are allowed to go by the old stickers that are on the seat that you have in your possession. When it is a backless booster, it's meant for children a minimum of four years old, weighing 40 to 100 pounds, measuring 40 to 57 inches. So this change of the weight limit basically affects when a booster seat, whether the combination switch to booster or whether the high back booster, when it's in the booster seat mode. Now we have new characters coming out all the time and we now have a series with Frozen. Uh, you'll see Anna, you'll see Elsa there. If you don't know who they are, I'm sure one of your kids can tell you who is who. And you see Olaf waving at you right now too. But this is the newest that came out last year as far as the booster seats go. We have our backless booster seats. The change in the uh, weight limit does not affect the backless booster because we have always said a minimum of four years old, 40 to 100 pounds. Uh, there is a, oh, one thing I just like to go back and talk about real quickly when we talked about this high back booster does uh, come apart. It does separate. It does switch into a no back booster, and that's very convenient too for storage and for traveling. Moving right along, here's our frozen no back booster that come out. Uh, you see Anna, you'll see Elsa again, and you'll see Olaf, and now you'll see Kristoff, and you'll see uh, Sven the reindeer. Again, if you're not sure who they are, your kids are gonna tell you who they are. This is our new Batman seat for 2020. That is for the new movie, The Batman. I personally like this color scheme a little bit better. It's my favorite, but you're gonna see that on the market also. Now we're gonna get into a few stories here. These tend to be some of my favorite uh, pictures here. You see that child in the upper right there with uh, Marshall the Fire Dog, good friend Alan. 
Buchanan down in North Carolina. He's a state fire marshal. He tell he's told me for years that he will take Marshal a fire dog to the North Carolina State Fair, and it's like a magnet. It draws in people so you can educate them. I just want to point out that these character seats can be very helpful for education. For years at the Chicago Auto Show, which I'm sure many of you out there have gone to the auto show, for about the last three or four years, we have had one of the character seats, at least two, up at the booth at the Chicago Auto Show. And the technicians that work up there have given me feedback that, that have said that that has increased the foot traffic at our booth at the Chicago Auto Show a lot. It's just something to draw the people in. It's something once you get them there, you can educate them on whatever you want. But I just want to give you the idea to try to use a character seat when you're educating at booths and stuff like that. It comes in really handy. A short story about Paul Albright, my friend, when he had, when he bought his grandson his first Batman seat and they went to Walmart. When they were going to park in the parking lot and get out and go into Walmart, his grandson said, uh, can I take Batman into the store with me? It's like they get attached to this and they want to sit in their car seat. As a police officer, I can't tell you more than once. I'd have a mother or father, but usually a mother would come up to me and I'd be in uniform. And they'd say, would you come over and kind of yell at my kid a little bit here, you know, make them sit in their car seat because they don't want to sit in their car seat anymore. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, I'm in uniform. I don't want to go up and be mean to a child. They're going to dislike police officers for the rest of their lives. It's up to you to discipline them. But the whole idea here is they become attached to these car seats and they want to sit in their car seats as we're going to see in the next slide right here. Now you have uh, Chad's daughter sitting on an airplane in a Batman seat. So can you use our character seats on airplanes? Yes, you can. There is a picture proof. There is the picture to prove it right there. As we slide over to the right side, you look at these kids that are underneath the Christmas tree. One of my favorite pictures. These kids are smiling because they just got a toy for Christmas. But we know that that's not a toy. They're going to be able to use this product, this seat in their car, and it's going to keep them safe in the event of a crash. And they're going to want to sit in their seat because they love it. It's part of what they got. So they think they got a toy for Christmas, but you know they didn't really get a toy for Christmas. They got something that's really going to help them. Now, my good friend Bob Wall, who loved the guy to death, but I, we now have a Batman seat made for Bob Wall. Boom! Here's our big Batman seat, and I'm sure Bob can fit in that puppy. This Batman seat was created to, it's part of an educational tool also, because our team out in California will take this seat to when they do car seat check lanes that at different establishments out there. And part of the offer is that if you bring your kids and get them uh, checked with their car seats at our check lane, you can come in and the kids can get their picture taken in the big Batman seat. So we use this as part of our educational system too, because we wanna keep kids as safe as we possibly can. Last year in 220, we were hoping to get this at the Kim conference, Kids in Motion conference. But as you know, the conference got canceled. I've already been talking to some people at Kim, trying to see if we can negotiate to get Big Batman at Kim. So if we do, you'll be able to see the seat in person if you come to Kids in Motion. I don't know exactly where my time is, but I'm on my last slide right now. Hopefully I got most of the information I wanted to get in, and hopefully I didn't talk too fast. But right now on this last slide, I hear somebody in the background. Uh, that is our team. This is when we took the picture, when we uh, had our class to turn everybody into, or to do our child passenger safety technicians class. It is our idea that we want to make every one of our staff members child pasture technicians on our team. And we did have a class scheduled in 220, but it got canceled because of COVID. We do have a tech discount. If you look on this page right here, you see KDJ at kidsembrace.com. If you want to take part in our discount for our seats, 25% off, get a hold of Katie. Uh, we have a seven year expiration date on our seat. No, you cannot use our seat with inflatable seat belts. My information is up on top there. I'm the advocate relations manager. That is my cell phone. Please feel free to get in contact with me for any information you need about Kids Embrace. Thank you very much. Hope I didn't talk too fast, but I wanted to get all the information in because I think it's important. Go ahead, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony, again, for being a panelist. And if we can get Bob 
and Danny to turn back on their cameras. I have some questions that I'd like to pose for you. And Danny, I know you've answered a couple of them in the private bar and on the chat group, but I'd like to go through a couple of these with you couple of these with each of you. So Danny, first off, expiration of the Wiz Rider. What how long is your Wiz Rider before it expires? Um seven years after production. Seven years after production. Yep. And then next Danny, another one was do you need to lock the seatbelt? And I know you answered this, but just for the benefit of everybody that didn't get to see me. Very good question. No, you don't have to. Usually if we test it's without if the kits it's, it's just, let's say, too, too, too wild on the seat. You can lock it, but you don't have to. No. no. Okay. And then, have you? Do you have any experience, Danny, on using this um, with any casted children? For instance, a hip spike a cast or anything along those lines. Personally, no. We did some testings, but we we didn't go into the. We, I know there are several parents using it, but honestly, I can't say how it works. Okay, but perfect. That's perfect, Bob. If we can bother you for a couple minutes, um, we Only had some... a couple because I got a I got a presentation right after this. <laughs> All right, no problem. What, Bob? Do you know what the weight difference is between the relax and the relax light? Is there uh, much weight? You mean weight the difference? seat part, the relax, the difference in the base weight is a couple pounds, but as far as the seats themselves, the seat itself, the uh, the regular Pippa is a little over seven pounds and the light is 5.4 pounds. So a couple, definitely a couple pounds easier for a mom to carry. Absolutely, yes. Okay, and then Bob, the light LX is the difference between the light LX and just the regular seat. Is that the the merino wool fabric that you have? No, they on all that? they all are are FR free, so they all have a little bit of a different fabrics. They're all natural fibers with a blend of wool. The difference in the RX would be the dream drape and some other little touches on it. It probably has a higher blend of merino wool, but the biggest feature would be the dream drape versus out the dream drape. Okay. And then um, there was a question from a NICU parent or NICU nurse wanting to know on the old style PIPA, which is the one I have one in my test. The standard in my one, yep. They, they had some issues trying to establish the angle uh, for the breathing test. Do you have any suggestions for getting proper angle or have you heard this at all with the old was, style? Was that the old or the standard base or the relaxed base? I think the standard base, probably the relaxed being the newer one. I don't think it was, it wasn't specified in the question, but I'm sure it was the standard okay. previous the standard base. base. If they bring the base up and the bubble is in the line, whether it's on the floor or not, it, okay, just so it's on the line. Um, even on, because, you know, most of the benches that these are tested on anyway are pretty flat. It's designed to have more recline within the shell of the seat. So being on a flat floor should not be an issue. Um, it still would be within a few degrees of what it should be in the car. Um, I thought the question, and I saw, I did answer a question about that, but I thought they were talking about the relaxed space, and I don't really know. Now, I don't know which base they were talking about. Okay. They said without the angleometer, which our, our standard base does have the bubble, which gives you a, a clear vision of it's level, it's not level, it's whatever. Whereas the other ones are programmed in. Okay. Um, so when you're looking at the other one, I think that's where the question is. How do we know where it's supposed to be? And again, it's it's on the floor. If it's in one or two, it still should be within a few degrees of what it would be in the car. Okay, that's perfect. Um, back to, or let's go to Tony. Tony, do you know what the top harness height, top slot harness height level or inches would be? I had a question from one of the CPS technicians. I have not measured it out, no, but we still have the height limits on the, on the harness itself. But no, I have not taken a ruler to it and I, and I have not measured it. That that highest harness slot was put in after the tool was designed, and it was added because people asked for a little bit of a higher harness slot 
So they added that slot to give it a little bit more height. So like I say, it looks a little bit different, but it's perfectly fine to use. It's been tested. There's no problem whatsoever, but we just wanted to give the parents out there a little bit more height to use on that combination seat. Okay. And then, do you know, Tony, would that probably be in the specs somewhere if somebody looked up the specs for Kids Embrace? If it's not in the specs itself, if they just get a hold of me, I will uh, I will be in contact with our uh, engineer and I will make sure they get those specs if they can't okay. find it. Perfect. And then back to you, Danny, I got another one for you. So uh, the question was, should WizWriter be considered for use everyday use? Um, Thinking, I'm thinking of vehicles where three restraints might be needed due to space, you know, space tightness, uh, room between the seats. Of course, three in a row, that's a big, big issue. Not everybody owns a that big car. So yes, of course, I personally use it quite often while picking up kids from sports, school, uh, and even being somewhere outside. Yes. Perfect. Um, I think I've gone through most of the questions. I don't see any new ones coming in. Does any of the panelists see anything that I've missed? I got go one, but I asked them to email me directly because I'm going to have to get off here and go to my next thing and sign in. Okay. Well, um, with no that, shit, just the email again, some people ask about my email. Yes. I yeah. already starts getting emails. Great. <laughs> I love it. Thanks <laughs> for that. It's daniel at wistrider.com. Bob, would you want to give your email one more time, please? Absolutely. Bob.wall at nunababy.com. And Tony, could you do the same? Yes, it's T O N Y J, Tony J, all one word, at kids embrace, all one word, dot com, K I D S E M B R A C E dot com. And with that, folks, I would greatly like to thank all the panelists. I have one of each of your products. Uh, Tony, I've got your Batman. I also have the Wonder Woman. Um, I've got the small Danny of the Whiz Rider. I need to get a large so that I can demonstrate that and show that in classes. I've got a couple uh, Nunas, Bob, so I appreciate that. I need to check into getting a new Relax. So with that, we'd like to thank all of you for participating and hey, then this this, this yeah. class itself. Yes, sir. Uh, one more thing, uh, Danny's in Europe and Switzerland. I am a consultant with him here in the United States. If anybody needs or has any questions about WizWriter in the United States, they can feel free to get a hold of me and I can help them out. Perfect, we appreciate both of you being here. So thank you very much. If you're attending the next session, we would ask you to um, get logged into the session before your break. If you're going to another session, we appreciate that. And then you can close this one down. Again, thanks all. thank all of you for being here and answering all of our questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.